Today's lesson is a musical trip down memory lane. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our program. My name is Roger, and I'm Mike. And today we're going to talk about music, one of your favorite topics. Isn't that right, Mike? That's absolutely right, Roger. Both listening to music and playing music, as you know, I play in some bands, and it is actually quite amazing. This story, a musical trip down memory lane. I was just talking to a friend, I believe, just yesterday, about what an amazing thing it is that you can hear a song from long ago, maybe a song you actually haven't heard in decades or longer, and all of a sudden you're back in a certain time in a certain place. And also, I've been surprised at how easy. It Is to remember song lyrics or the words of a song, even if you haven't heard that song in many, many years. So, music and memory, there is a very, very powerful connection there. Indeed, and that's the connection we are talking about today—the connection between music and our past. And maybe some happy memories can float up to the surface when you hear a special song on the radio. And we'll probably mention some songs that affect us that way、mm. as we get through our program today. So today we're taking a musical trip down memory lane. So let's begin our lesson by listening to the first part, and then we'll come back to discuss it. A musical trip down memory lane. An old pop song comes on the radio, and as you listen to it, memories begin to flood your mind, transporting you back in time. Suddenly, you feel as if you are reliving a particular moment of your past. Chances are, most people have experienced something like this. But why exactly is music able to trigger memories? Hello, everyone. First, we see the verb "trigger," which means to trigger, or to trigger. For example, the smoke triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggers the smoke triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggered the fire alarm, alerting the residents to danger. Music triggered the fire alarm. 表示引发刺激或过敏的事物，也可以是诱因的意思。我们可以说 ，Pollen is one of my biggest allergy triggers, and I start sneezing when flowers bloom in my neighborhood. 花粉是我主要的过敏源之一。我家附近的花开始，我就会开始打喷嚏。或是 ，If you want to quit smoking, you should learn the triggers that cause you to smoke. 如果你想戒烟，你应该要知道你抽烟的诱因是什么。Okay, so in the first part here, we're talking about an old pop song. Pop here, just short for popular, a popular song that is usually played on the radio or nowadays on the internet. I don't know how many people still listen to the radio anymore, but、uh, in a lot of places, of course, in restaurants, some radio stations are playing on their speakers there. And then an old pop song comes on the radio, and as you listen to it, memories begin to flood your mind, transporting you back. In time, so here we've got the verb to flood. It can be both a noun and a verb, but here it's a verb, and it's not talking about a sudden inundation of water when the water levels rise. There's not a flood going on, or things aren't flooding, or the streets aren't flooding. But in this particular case, you've got lots of memories floating up to the surface of your memories. That's absolutely right. And then we read: suddenly, you feel as if you are reliving a particular moment of your. Past, as Roger explained, when something floods into your mind, it happens quite quickly in quite a powerful way. So that's why we would begin the next sentence with "suddenly." It happens almost within a second or two, very, very quickly. And what happens quickly? You feel as if you're reliving a particular moment of your past. Of course, when we live through certain events, when things happen to us, we live through those events. We live through those experiences, and then if you relive something, it's kind of like you're living through it again. We generally use a term like reliving experiences or situations when we're talking about memories, remembering things, telling stories from the past, and it kind of 
comes alive in a much more real way. Another time you might relive a particular moment of your past is by looking at old photographs or something like that. But if you got out your phone and looked through some pictures from two, three, four, five years ago, you know some of those pictures, especially the ones that happened at special times, really memorable times. Those pictures, those memories, would allow you to relive these moments and these experiences from the past. And I think as the article continues, it says. This is probably a fairly common experience. That's why we read. Chances are, most people have experienced something like this. Yeah, when we use the phrase "chances are," we're kind of saying there's a good chance. It's quite likely. If you were going to bet money on this, it would be a pretty safe bet. If you ask ten people, probably eight, nine, maybe even all ten of them would say yes. I have experienced something like this. I have heard that old song that reminded me of my high school girlfriend or a trip with my family, and the the song was on the car radio or something like this. And of course, when we experience things, well, they happen to us, right? There's something that you know occurs in our life, a situation we live through, and probably memories that we still carry from that time. So this is a、uh, as we Say something that most people can probably agree with and go, "Oh yeah, that's happened to me." But here's the question, and here's the main focus of the article as we reach the end of the first section of our article. But why exactly is music able to trigger memories? There's some really powerful things going on in the brain that、uh, causes these memories to trigger. Because of music, because of a smell, because of different things that just make something happen quite quickly, and that's why we're using this word "trigger." Now, normally, you might know "trigger" as a noun, as a piece of. Probably a gun. I think that's the most common thing people would think of having a trigger. That thing that you pull with your finger when you want the gun to fire. We call that little curved piece of metal that your finger hooks around and pulls back on. That is the trigger. And of course, when we're using trigger as a verb, we're basically saying something that causes an action. Like when you pull the trigger on the gun, the gun will fire. When something triggers your memory, it's like this is what causes your memories to come flooding. Back, the music will trigger a memory. Seeing a an old object, maybe something, an old book that your grandfather gave you as a child, that would trigger memories of your grandfather. And it's amazing how these things can cause memories to happen, to come back, or to trigger those memories. Yep, those memories flood your mind and they transport you back in time. And yes, indeed, we're talking about music,、mm-hmm. and we're asking the question: Yeah, why exactly is music able to do this? Why does music Trigger those memories and take us back to happier times, or maybe sadder times, or whatever the case may be. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's continue to talk about how music triggers memories. Let's listen now to the second part. According to experts, our life experiences turn into lasting memories when they're attached to strong emotions. Such memories are implicit. Which means we may not even know we have them. Music itself is highly emotional, and it often accompanies emotional events such as parties, celebrations, and funerals. Even in commonplace settings such as cafes and restaurants, music often plays in the background. When the brain creates an association between a certain piece of music and an emotional event, that music can become a kind of cue. Later on, when we hear the song again, the music can prompt memories of that event to arise. The second part, we see the word "implicit." This word is a descriptive word, meaning implicit, implicit, or implicit. For example, there are some implicit rules in human society. In human society, there are some implicit rules in human society. There is no official rule about leave at this company, but it is implicit that you have to notify your manager in advance. 虽然这间公司没有关于休假的规定，但你绝对要提前告知你的主管。另外，补充这个字的反义词 explicit, e x p l i c i t, explicit， 意思是明确的或是清楚的。我们可以说 His message was quite explicit. Someone would be held accountable for the sudden drop in sales. His 意思很明确，有人要为销售额突然下降而负起责任。或是 ，He gave us explicit instructions on how to get to his house from the city center. 
他清楚地告诉我们怎么从市中心去他家。接下来我们看到单字 commonplace， 这个字是形容词，指平常的、普通的或是常见的。举例来说 ，glitches with new technology tend to be commonplace。新科技会有小故障是很平常的。也可以说 ，nowadays it is commonplace for couples to not have kids。现今夫妻没有生小孩是很常见的事。Okay, so let's dive into the second part here. The first sentence in the second part says, "According to experts, our life experiences turn into lasting memories when they're attached to strong emotions." So, indeed, if you had a wonderful family trip when you were a kid, or when you had happy times with your then girlfriend, or later on when you broke up, those are going to trigger strong memories. And of course, experts say that our life experiences will turn into Memories that last a long time. When you associate them with strong memories or strong emotions, rather, they're attached to strong emotions. I guess if you have neutral emotions, you're not really going to remember the song so much. That's very interesting, and even more interesting is the next sentence, which says, "Such memories are implicit, which means we may not even know we have them." That's a really surprising thing, and that would probably cause one of the biggest reactions when these memories. Flood back. You don't even remember having this memory, so it's not like that special song that you picked out for your your wedding day, for your first dance with your husband or wife, or something like that. Not like that favorite song that your friends listened to right when you graduated from high school. Those songs, of course, will trigger memories, but those are memories that are not implicit. Those are memories that you know about. We're gonna remember this moment for the rest of our lives. You said that at the time, but with some. Of these other memories, these musical memories that are triggered, they're implicit. You didn't even know you had them. You'll remember. <gasps> Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. So that's the kind of magical part of it. Now, why is this? Well, it says music itself is highly emotional, and it often accompanies emotional events such as parties, celebrations, and funerals. Well, yeah, sure, of course, a lot of people listen to music for the emotional release or the emotional effect it has on them. Sad songs when your heart's broken. Happy, energetic songs when you're in a really good mood. Mood, things like that, of course, and it's true. We often use music or have music around us. It can often be a big part of certain big emotional life events, big parties, celebrations like graduations, weddings, birthdays, things like that, and even funerals. Of course, many people, especially in Western countries, might pick out certain songs to play at their funerals. So, if your grandfather had a Favorite church hymn or a favorite old song that reminded him of his wife when they met, things like that. You might hear that at the funeral, and of course, that will become a big part of it. But yes, we often use music to enhance our celebrations. Celebrations are. Big events, generally happy events. Most people would not really think of a funeral as a celebration, but in some ways it could be if people are getting around and saying nice things and sharing their feelings at a time. But generally, we would think of graduation parties, birthday parties, weddings, Christmas parties, holiday parties, things like that as celebrations. Indeed, and of course, the verb form is to celebrate. So you might celebrate your birthday on Saturday by having a big party or something. And、uh, speaking of funerals, yeah, I hope that、uh, they can play the song "Watermelon in Easter Hay" by Frank Zappa at my funeral. It will be quite an emotional experience for everybody. But、uh, let's move on now to the next sentence. Here it says, "Even in commonplace settings such as cafes and restaurants, music often plays in the background when the brain creates." An association between a certain piece of music and an emotional event. There's that connection there, and that music can become a kind of cue. A cue is like a signal. If you're in a TV studio and the director or the floor director is there watching the clock, and then that person will point to the announcer, that will be the announcer's cue or the announcer's signal to start talking. The camera and lights are on, etc. So music can become a kind of cue. If you're in a restaurant and you hear a song, oh, I remember that song. That reminds me of my high school days. 
Absolutely. It's kind of a cue or kind of a trigger, as we also said earlier in the article. Later on, then we read, when we hear the song again, the music can prompt memories of that event to arise. It can cause those memories to begin flooding your mind, as we read in the first sentence of the article. Yeah, when things are prompted, it's kind of like a trigger. It causes something. It's an action that follows another action. If you're speaking to someone and then you're hoping that they will answer your question, you might prompt them by saying, and what do you think? Or, and you? Or just even raising your eyebrows as you're looking at the person. You're kind of showing them that you're waiting for another action to happen. And your prompt, we can also use it as a noun, is sort of signaling that, okay, now it's your time. And in the same way that music can come along and it can cause your memories to, okay, here come the memories. I'm listening to that old song that's connected from some kind of event. And of course, those memories will arise. They will come back. They will reappear or they will just appear. When something arises, it's as if it comes out of another thing. It suddenly becomes visible. There it is. It happens. It occurs. Okay, that brings us to the second part of our lesson for today. Now let's listen to the third part, and then we'll talk about it. Interestingly, some of the most emotional moments of our lives happen when we're teens and twenty-somethings, a time of life when we also listen to a lot of pop music. So hearing songs from those periods decades later can feel like an intense trip down memory lane. Such effects indeed attest to the incredible power of music. The third part, we see the word "attest" to prove or to prove. For example, inspectors attested to the safety of the food products. Inspection officers verified the safety of the food products. You can also say, "Anyone on my team can attest that we've been working around the clock on this project." 我团队中的任何人都可以证明我们日以继夜的在这项计划上。另外，补充这个字的同义词 testify，T-E-S-T-I-F-Y，testify， testify, 这个字是动词，意思是证明。例如 ，These numbers testify to the success of our marketing strategy。这些数字证明我们的行销策略成功。或是。The increasingly frequent natural disasters around the world testify to a disruption in Earth's natural balance. 越来越频繁的天然灾害证明了地球的自然平衡的瓦解。Okay, the third part of our lesson today begins by saying, "Interestingly, some of the most emotional moments of our lives happen when we're teens and twenty-something." So, interestingly—that's an adverb. It just means it is interesting that some of our most emotional moments, or some of the most emotional moments of our lives, happen when we're quite young, when we're teenagers, and when we are in our twenties. Twenty-somethings just refers to people who are between the ages of twenty and twenty. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. So, hearing songs from those periods decades later can feel like an intense trip down memory lane. Well, yeah, I guess a lot of people might agree with that. Those memories of your early days in college, maybe when you met the person who you might end up getting married a few years later. A lot of these things might happen in your twenties or into your early thirties. So this is a time when we're old enough to sort of have memories. We're old enough to feel, you know, a little bit older at that point. You're not in your childhood anymore. And of course, big things happen in your twenties: graduation, falling in love, getting married, your first job, your first big. Trip by yourself, you know all sorts of things like that. So hearing songs from those periods decades later can feel like an intense trip down memory lane. Absolutely, those were intense times, times full of drama and emotion and big changes in your life. So when the memories come flooding back, those memories can be almost as intense. And when we use intense in this way, we're basically just saying very powerful, something that has a lot of force and effect. It could be like an intense. Wind and a typhoon. It could be an intense anger. Someone is very, very angry. You can see their faces turning red. You can feel the intensity. And of course, intense memories, memories of big events. Hopefully, good events. You know, like when you fell in love, when you got married, or bad events, like. 
being frightened in an accident or having some kind of terrible experience where you thought you might die or something like that. These are powerful things, not easily forgotten. Amazingly, music can bring them back in almost as powerful a way as when they first happened. Yep, and such effects indeed attest to the incredible power of music. So to attest to something means it provides evidence, or it shows us, or it proves that this is the case. And indeed, music is very powerful. It is incredibly powerful. So incredible means unable to be believed. It's just so great, so intense, so wonderful that you just can't believe it. Oh, that song was so incredible! I gotta hear it again. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time. Now to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。今天要练习刻漏字的题型。那我们来看看文章的五个题目。第一题是 Chances are most people 空格 something like this。很可能大部分的人都。空格这样的事，那这题是来考我们时态。四个选项分别是 ：A. Are experiencing 现在进行式 ；B. Have experienced 现在完成式 ；C. Had experienced 过去完成式 ；D. Experienced 过去式。好，那么根据课文，它应该是要表达很可能大多数的人都经历过这样的事，也就是前文描述到说听到某首歌就想起某个回忆的情况嘛。那这是在谈论一个。曾经有过的经验，而且这个经验呢，有可能会再发生哦。所以时态要用现在完成式，我们答案要选 B。Have experienced， 但要补充一下，过去完成式 had 加 PP 呢，是表达在过去某个时间点之前就已经完成的动作或事情。那过去简单式呢，是指过去发生的一次性动作，隐含之后不再发生的那种语义。所以在这边这两个时态都不适用。好，来看第二题 ，According to experts。Our life experiences conjure lasting memories when they're attached to strong emotions. 根据专家的说法，当我们的生活经验和强烈的情感连接时，他们就会。空格持久的记忆，空格里面我们是要填入及物用法的片语动词。来看选项 A， make up。组成构成，那它的用法就是部分 make up 整体。B bring in， 它可以表达赚得或者挣，像我们说挣钱、赚得利润的那种动词。那么还可以表达引进啊，或者是采用等等。C give out 表示分发发放，也有产生的意思，像产生噪音啊、光等等。那么 D turn into 表示变成、成为。从语义上来判断，它应该是要表达我们生活经验会变成持久的记忆。这个答案要选择 D turn into。好，那么第三题。When the brain creates an association between a certain piece of music and an emotional event, that music can 空格。当大脑将某一首音乐和一个情感事件连接在一起，那个音乐就会空格。好，这题是来考我们对语义的了解哦。那选项 A suggest a type of warning， 这个 warning 就是警告。B represent a sort of example。C become a kind of cue. 哎，我们在中文有时候会说，哎，等下我 cue 到你的时候，你要怎么样怎么样哦？那 cue 在这边呢，它是当名词，有这种提示、暗示或是信号的意思。所以 become a kind of cue 就是指说变成一种暗示。那么 D maintain a form of clue. 好，那我们在这边它就是要表达说，当大脑将某一首音乐和一个情感事件连接在一起，那个音乐就会变成一种暗示或是提示，就好像音乐会。Q 到你一样，然后让你联想起相关的事件，所以最适合选项是 C. Become a kind of Q. 好，第四题是 Later on, when we hear the song again, the music can prompt memories of that event. To 空格之后，当我们在听到这首歌时，音乐可能就会促使那件事的记忆空格。这题考我们智慧，来看选项 A: expand 扩大增加 ；B: arise 是出现产生 ；C: respond 回应回答 ；D: recover 有恢复复原的意思。那么音乐会促使相关记忆浮现，会出现在我们脑海里，所以适合答案是 B: arise。第五题。
空格逗号 Some of the most emotional moments of our lives happen when we're teens and twenty somethings. A time of life when we also listen to a lot of pop music. 好，这边说空格逗号，我们生命中一些最激动人心的时刻，就发生在我们十几、二十几岁的时候。这段时间也是我们听很多流行音乐的时候。好，这题考我们副词，来看选项 A。Interestingly， 有趣的是 ；B。Fortunately， 幸运的是或是幸好 ；C。Eventually。最终，终于。那么 ，D instead， 反之作为替代。那这个段落是在说明为什么我们回头听十几、二十几岁那些时期的歌曲，这个回忆会涌上心头的那种有趣现象。从语义上来看，就只有 A interestingly 最适合，其他像那种幸运、幸好啊、最终、终于或者是反之的那些副词，选项语义都不符合。所以这边就答案选 A 咯。好，那以上是今天的讲解，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Trigger, the insult triggered a fight, which soon got out of control. Attach, has the microphone already been attached to the camera? Celebration, we can't afford a large celebration, so our wedding will be quite small. Commonplace, the artist finds beauty in even the most commonplace activities. Intense. Philip felt an intense pain in his stomach, so he stopped walking and sat down. Incredible! Yes, I agree. She is a person of incredible talent. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.